welcome back all of you in the last couple of classes we discussed lot of things about fundamentals of nmr including its historic perspective concept of spin and we discussed about spin angular momentum magnetic moment magnetic quantum number and the interaction of the nuclear spin or magnetic moment with the external magnetic field the effect of magnetic field uh, as the linearity of the interaction with the magnetic field and then we also discuss several things about the sensitivity of detection and we also arrived at what are the nuclei which give rise to nmr and how to arrive at the nuclear spin whether the odd integer or even integer then we applied lots of pulses pulse we discussed about magnetization population different ratio boltzmann distribution how to induce resonance and what is bulk magnetization after introducing the concept of bulk magnetization how do we tilt the magnetization by any angle we like the pulse phases rf phases signal phases everything we discussed okay and last time we also discussed about for example free induction decay t1 and t2 recovery that is t1 decay where the mag the coherence which is created will get completely decoherence as a function of time and then growth of magnetization along z axis to retain thermal equilibrium all those things were discussed okay and we also got the free induction decay we got the signal that's what we did the fourier transformation and we knew what is how to get the nmr spectrum and one thing i wanted to tell you when we start discussing about nmr when we especially the spectrum after fourier transformation we get peaks with certain width there is a natural line width for the peak you will not get a delta peak like i'm sorry delta peak like this sharp peak like this okay it is not possible to get that what is the reason for it there is a natural line width for this this is given by this due to uncertainty principle delta e into delta t is equal to h cross we know <coughs> energy and time are uncertainty pairs okay it means absolute peak is not the delta function and has some natural line width due to the lifetime of the spins in the excited state that is a important concept you should know that now the spins are excited here what is the lifetime of the spin or what okay if it is comes here and goes back what is the lifetime of this when the spins are here if it has to be excited to the highest high energy level so observed peak is not a delta function mainly because of natural line width depending upon the lifetime of the spins in the excited state now the shorter the lifetime the larger is the spread because delta t becomes smaller and smaller energy spread becomes larger and larger because this is a constant value now okay so now if if it resides in this state for a shorter time then the spread of this energy becomes even larger like this energy state then what will happen to the signal signal can be from here to here here to here here to here there are a number of possible transitions you can think of due to spread in the energy level as a consequence you don't get a delta function of single frequency you get peaks resonating at various frequencies like this I'm sorry and you are going to get a width like this this is the width of the peak it is coming because of uncertainty principle uncertainty and the natural line width is coming because of this okay fine that you can't do any to anything you can get the homogeneity tune the magnetic field try to get the best resolution but beyond the natural line width you can't do anything that is inherently present we have to accept that okay now when i have to detect the transitions when i get the nmr spectrum i said i am let us say i have a spin one spin and i get one transition i have 10 spins i'll get 10 transitions how do you mean, what do you mean by getting a transitions remember we had a spin one state spin half situation we got we have two states minus half and plus half we we also discussed the situation of spin by one we have minus 1 0 and plus 1 three states okay that's what we discussed if i go to 3 by 2 state 
minus 3 by 2, half, minus half, okay, minus 3 by 2, minus half, plus half and 3 by 2, 4 states. Now, what do you mean by observing the peak? Observing the peak is the population difference between two energy states. That's what I said. Now, the spins go from here to here or here to here. What is allowed? Can it go from here to here and also come back from here to here? Is it allowed? Or if spin can go only from here to here and come back only from here to here? Or if we extend this, can the spin go from here to here and come back from here to here? What are the allowed things? What are the allowed energy levels? Between them, spins can undergo transitions. That means what I mean by transition is the spins can undergo flipping from alpha state to beta state and beta state to alpha state. That is the requirement for observing the signal. As I said, there are two transitions. When the spin goes from plus alpha to uh, alpha state to beta state or beta to alpha state, that is from plus half to minus half, or it comes from minus half to plus half state, we are seeing the signal. One of the important conditions to see that transition, when this happens, if there are, let's say, 100 spins here and uh, 99 spins here, the difference of population one spin I'm detecting. So for such a thing to happen, the transition should take place only between the energy levels where M changes by plus one or minus one. What is M? I already told you, M is a magnetic quantum number, which depends upon I, MI, I said. It goes from minus I to plus I. For spin off state, we have two states, minus half and plus half. Is the transition allowed between them? Look at it. If the spin comes from, okay, it goes from plus half to minus half, Take the difference, it is 1. If it, it also came back, let's say, from minus half to plus half, it came down. Not only it went up, it came down. Take the difference here, minus half, minus half, plus half, it is minus 1. So both are allowed transitions. The transition can take place when the spins undergo flipping from the magnetic, when the, from the two energy states, whose mag, difference in the magnetic quantum number should be either plus 1 or minus 1. So if it is m is equal to minus half and m is equal to plus half here, the difference is called delta m. Delta m between these two energy states. That is difference in the total magnetic quantum number of two energy states. For this energy state, magnetic quantum number is minus one. This is plus one, plus, minus half, plus half. This difference is what you are going to see if it is plus one or minus one. Otherwise, Transitions are not allowed. Anything other than this are called forbidden transitions in NMR. Let me give you one more example like this. And also, one more thing you should understand in this case, what is happening is, if there are number of spins, only the change in the quantum here, of quantum of energy between the states is only one. It is a single quantum energy change. Plus half to minus half, or minus half to plus half coming is only change in the energy by only one quantum. Only one spin is changing its state. It is called single quantum transitions. A transition where one spin changes its state to alpha or beta, beta to alpha. If not one spin, even two spins or three spins does not matter. But the total magnetic quantum number of this state and this state you find out. And the change in this magnetic quantum number between these two states should be always plus one or minus one. That means when the magnetic quantum number changes by plus one or minus one, it is called single quantum transitions. Please understand, when the magnetic quantum number changes between two energy states, either by plus one or minus one, it can be single spin or multiple spin, no problem. Multiple spins also can undergo transition, but total change in the magnetic quantum number between two energy states must be either plus one or minus one. They are called single quantum transitions. Okay. This I will just now we understood. For spin-off nuclei, this is allowed transition because delta time is equal to plus one or minus one. Now my question is, let us look at spin one nuclei. There are three possible energy states, m equal to minus one, zero, and plus one. Now what are the allowed transitions here? Remember, minus one to zero. Is it allowed? Difference is minus one. Zero to minus one is also allowed. Difference is one. Zero to one is allowed. Difference is minus one. One to zero is also allowed. 
difference is one what about transition of here to here minus one to plus one if we take the difference it is two plus two or minus two it is double quantum okay it requires two quantum of energy not single quantum in all these changes here when the magnetic quantum number changes by plus one or minus one there is one quantum of change in the energy but here two quantum of energy that's not allowed only single quantum is detected that is the allowed transition so now let us see what are the allowed transitions in plus in the spin one system this is allowed this also allowed what are the other things allowed here nothing there are only two possible transitions allowed in the spin one nuclei now what about the spin three body case will take what are the possible energy states what are the possible magnetic quantum numbers 3 by 2 minus 3 by 2 minus half plus half and plus 3 by 2 now look at it what are the allowed things minus 3 by 2 to minus half is allowed okay take the difference it is one okay either way is also possible minus half to minus 3 by 2 if you go it is minus 1 okay that's also allowed this allowed transition whatever between these two of course it is allowed because we saw in the spin off case spin off nuclear case plus half and minus half are the two energy states we know it is allowed what about plus 3 by 2 to half that's also allowed but what about transition from here to here there is change of two quantum of energy it is called double quantum that is not allowed not at all what about from here to here if we take the difference from here to here three it is three quantum of energy it is triple quantum it is definitely forbidden so this this one is a double quantum transition where two quantum of energy is involved here triple quantum three quantum of energy is involved they are not allowed only single quantum transition where change in the spin angular momentum is either plus 1 or minus 1 are allowed so in this case also only three are allowed that's what we observed so now let us understand in the transitions what we observe in isolated spins and coupled spins okay coupled spins we will discuss little later when we introduce spin spin coupling scalar coupling at the moment i'll just simply tell you for uncoupled spins what are the energy levels what are the allowed transitions that we will we will discuss of course barely you can always think of for isolated spin one spin off nuclei one spin which is the example for that think of chloroform chcl3 if i take chcl3 okay chcl3 now only one proton is there if i want to detect of course don't worry this is the natural abundance i do not expect this to interact at the moment okay we will not consider that we will see only one proton and this will not interact with chlorine also how many energy levels you can think of only one proton is there and spin off nuclei there are only two possible energy states this is like this it can be treated like an isolated spin half nucleus although it is in a molecule will re at the moment we will ignore the interaction with carbon 13 and also there is interaction with chlorine 3 chlorine the cl3 in which case we say it is an isolated spin spin half nucleus a number of allowed transition is only one so if you go and take the spectrum of chloroform in nmr how many peaks you should get only one peak okay that's what happens that's what you are here that's what you observe nothing else you will see okay single spin isolated gives a single peak now let us consider the energy level diagram for homo and heteronuclear spins and see how many transitions are allowed in each of the cases how we detect the transition this is a very important thing so that for future classes you to understand this is a requirement now if i consider energy states of two homo nuclear spins remember i am considering two homo nuclear spins there are possibilities like this ho oh, two homo nuclear spins are like this i have two protons this proton and this proton they can interact because there are two tiny magnets they can interact they need not interact doesn't matter either of them is possible in the, when they interact there is an interaction energy you know the what is the interaction strength i'll tell you what is that coupling and everything later if there is, there could be interaction there may not be interaction now we consider both the possibilities let us see what happens okay now if i have two spins what are the possible orientations of each spins 
is whether it is coupled or uncoupled does not matter whether they are interacting or not let us say this spin one is there only one spin is there not spin one only one spin which is spin half nuclei one proton it can have two orientations plus half and minus half i have take another spin another proton two orientations again plus half and minus half now we'll take both of them together what are the combinations you can think of both can be up both can be down or this up this down or this up this down only four possibilities let us find out what happens if both are down when it is down this is spin half minus half nuclei spin half or minus half orientation this is spin minus half the magnetic total magnetic quantum number for this energy state is sum of these two please understand the total magnetic quantum number for this energy state if you take it is sum of the individual magnetic moments what is individual magnetic moment of this spin in this state minus half this is minus half so what is the total magnetic momentum of this energy state minus half plus minus half this is minus 1 what about this state this is minus half this is plus half so what is the total magnetic moment of this energy state zero minus half plus half if you take some of these it is zero so total magnetic moment of any energy state if you want you can you have to take magnetic state the state of each of the spin what is its magnetic moment either plus half or minus half and then take the sum that's all now we do the same thing here what this is plus half this is minus half so if you take the sum it is zero so for this is the state where total magnetic moment is zero what about this one plus half and plus half sum is one so now there are four possible energy state corresponding to four four possible orientation the magnetic uh, magnetic moment okay magnetic moment of each energy state if you calculate this is minus 1 0 0 plus 1 but remember one thing i have written alpha and beta states i have put as nearly same for homonuclear spin i use the word nearly same although plus half and minus half is 0 minus half plus half is 0 but if you we go very very deep into the nmr theory it is not exactly equal there is small difference could be there that we will not worry but for your level for the level of understanding at the moment we, we, without going into the detail advanced nmr we will say both the energies are equal and i have written energy states nearly equal all the small difference i have given don't worry about it okay so this is the energy states for the homonuclear spins four energy states you write for, like this what about the energy states for two heteronuclear spins like one is proton other is carbon how does it work look at this this is energy state i have written now these two have one energy separation you see look at this and that is exactly equal to this look at this energy separation this is exactly equal to this energy separation that means two energy separations are same for in one case and two energy separation these two energy separations are same in other case why did i write like that remember i am considering two heteronuclei one is proton hydrogen okay one is proton other is carbon carbon 13 what is the gamma of carbon 13 gamma of carbon 13 is 1/4th of that of the proton what do you understand from the concepts we have so far discussed the, if the gamma is 1/4th less the energy separation is 1/4th less right so what we did is the same in the homonuclear case what you observed we wrote four energy level four energy levels but remember this i wrote is the energy separation for heteronuclear spin that is carbon 13 this separation is four times smaller than this separation this is another energy separation for this this is four times smaller than this now why i wrote like this what is this one this is simple to understand this one we will look at the transitions later but at the moment you understand 
I consider this is beta state of spin one. This is beta state of spin two. Let us consider one as proton and two as carbon 13. That's what we consider. Now, uh, transition from this to this is allowed. Minus one and zero. Minus one and zero, this is allowed. Plus one, zero, this is allowed. Plus one and zero, this is allowed. So there are four transitions allowed because the magnetic quantum number of this energy state is minus one, zero, zero, plus one. Similar to homonuclear case. This is what we got. Can I allow this transition? Is allowed. In this transition, what is the spin which is which nuclear is changing its state? Look at it. I said one is proton, two is carbon. The carbon. Oh no, I'm sorry, it should be different because the carbon we have made smaller here. Okay. One is carbon, two is proton. Because I've written this energy state smaller. So we'll consider this to be carbon energy. So one is carbon, two is proton. In this case, proton is changing state from beta to alpha. One single quantum is allowed. But state of carbon is remaining same. This transition corresponds to proton. Understand? If the transition takes place between these two states, this has to be for proton because proton is changing its state from alpha to beta and vice versa. What about this transition? This is also allowed, 1 and 0. But here, again, proton is changing its state from alpha to beta. These two are proton transitions. The energy separation is larger. I'll say larger intensity peak like this. Okay. We'll go to the next one. This transition is allowed. What is getting changed? It is minus 1 and 0. Which spin is changing its state? One is carbon. See, carbon one is changing from alpha to beta and beta to alpha. This is allowed. What about proton state? Remains unaltered. Okay. What about this one? Here also, alpha of carbon is changing to beta and vice versa. But proton state is remains unaltered. So these two correspond to carbon energy. energy carbon transition and these two correspond to proton transitions and I said this separation is larger the intensity is larger I'll say this is larger and this is only one fourth intensity this is for carbon that's why I wrote these energy states like this proton has highest intensity four times more than that of the carbon this is the heteronuclear energy state small gap is for heteronuclear dilute spin with less gamma this large gap is for proton with abundant gamma. Okay, that's it. Now, we look at the transitions into non-interacting spins. Two non-interacting spins. That means the same two spins we'll consider, whether it's homonuclear or heteronuclear, does that matter? There is no interaction between these two. They are simply isolated spins. Nevertheless, we consider the situation one has a chemical shift A, which I'll discuss. I, instead of chemical shift, I'm using the word. So one comes at frequency A, other comes at frequency X. We'll say that. Because I have not introduced, introduced chemical shift yet. That day I'm going to talk in the next class. So one comes at frequency A, one comes at frequency X. And I'll assume like that. Now, find out what are the four magnetic states for this. What is the total magnetic moment of each of these energy states? First is plus half, plus half. Both are alpha, alpha state. This is plus one. Second energy state, plus half, minus half, zero. Minus half, plus half, zero. Minus half, minus half, minus one. These are the only possible magnetic states. We arrived at simply taking the sum of each individual magnetic moment of the particular state. That's all we did. Okay. We wrote the energy level. We knew that. We have taken the example for our homonuclear we already discussed. Now look at, let us look at the allowed transitions. This is allowed. I said it is one spin that correspond to A is undergoing transition. Homonuclear, if I take two protons, I don't care which is which. I call one is A, other is X. That's all. This correspond to one of the transitions for a particular proton. I labeled it as A. This is A transition. What about this? Here also, alpha of A is changing to beta of A. Similarly here, 
alpha phase change into beta a and versa versa vice versa what is this transition that is also a transition right now what about uh, what are the other transitions allowed use your selection rule what you understood just now is this allowed plus 1 to minus 1 to 0 allowed difference is 1 minus 1 or plus 1 both are allowed so here state of proton it remains unaltered remains same but state of x is changing from alpha to beta what is this transition then x transition what is allowed now one more allowed this is also allowed again state of proton is remaining unaltered state of x is getting changed from alpha to beta what is this transition x transition so how many x transitions you got two how many eight transitions we got two in a two spin system which are non interacting we got four spins i'm sorry four transitions four peaks we get but remember this is energy separation this energy separation this as this okay this is same as this and this is same as this that means a transition although there are two free two peaks the frequencies are same because this energy separation is same what will happen then both a transitions will overlap and give such a single peak there it is like two peaks one over the other overlap what about x x also this and this same frequency because the energy separation is same here also there are two peaks overlapped one over the other there are two peaks so in the essential you see one peak for a and one peak for x that's all you understood so how many peaks we got totally four peaks two for a and two for x because of the energy is same they are non interacting spins if they were interacting it would have been different you would have got four peaks but since there is a, they are non interacting there is a overlap of transitions and you get only two peaks that's all let us take an example i have a molecule 10 different protons are there 10 different hydrogens are there none of them are interacting with each other how many peaks do you expect 10 peaks because each of them we consider as an isolated spin if you consider the possibility of spin orientations you have to write okay what 10 may be different take 3 you have to take alpha 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 beta 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 this like the two up one down all combinations you have to see then you find out what are the allowed transitions if they, there is no interactions you will find out if there are three spins you get only three peaks because each of them get four four peaks they overlap so in non interacting spins there are there may be n number of spins present in the molecule if none of them are interacting among themselves then you get one peak for each of the spin isolate this is this can be treated like n isolated spins you understand this is what happens if you if the spins are not coupled or interacting now basically in nmr that situation is very rare all the spins generally will interact maybe we fit there far away there is coupling is low interaction strength is low but generally they interact then you will not get two peaks which are overlapped you get two separate peaks like this that is what we are going to discuss when you go to scalar coupling discussion etc but you please understand now why in this two non interacting spin cases the two frequencies a and x four peaks are there two two will overlap and you get only two peaks like this one for a one for x i am assuming here frequency of x is larger than that of a i am not talking anything about chemical shift for you it is a symbol used for chemical shift called delta right now i don't worry about it this is what i say frequency of x is larger than a so i get two peaks like this if i take it two non interacting spin put an in the nmr magnet take the spectrum you get two peaks like this you understood so when it interacts it becomes very complex and why they get separated like, like this why instead of uh, why can't they both these peaks come at the same frequency all those things we discuss that comes under a topic called chemical shift and why these people are uh, if they are interacting what will happen there is a coupling and there is a further splitting of the energy level this comes in a topic called scalar coupling 
all these things together gives nmr spectrum beautiful spectrum with more multiplicity more complexity more distortion uh, dispersion etc so if we analyze all those things in the subsequent classes from next class onwards and then by the end of this class we should be in a position to analyze all nmr spectra of various nuclei and take examples and i'll discuss all of them with you so okay that's it for now and uh, in all this uh, several classes previous classes this was the conceptual understanding of variety of types of things we discussed okay and most important thing is what happens to spin what is the sensitivity what is the interaction and what is the this thing uh, coherence what is saturation what happens to the coherence what happens to the longitudinal longitudinal magnetization number of things we discuss i tell you in the last about 8 or 10 classes this please go back and read what i have given you nmr is a huge ocean what i have given is a tip of an iceberg there are a lot of things to understand but this one is the basic requirement for you to understand at least fundamentals of nmr so that you will be comfortable enough to analyze the spectrum and interpret so this at least this much please what i don't only rely on what i have been talking what i have given is some concepts some ideas it is only very small percentage lot of information you have to get from the literature please go through books and journals and you will understand much more so i will stop here from next class onwards we'll go to other topics like chemical shift coupling interpretation of multiplicity and the varieties of spins etc variety of nuclei will lot of other topics after one day then we go to 2d lot more thing to cover in the remaining class classes here of this course okay i thank you i'll stop here for the day